This is a key to topic 18 worksheet, and that's the one that's called extra one. And in number one, you're asked to find each square root. And if it's not a real number, then write not a real number. So in 1a, you have, in 1a, you have the square root of 36. Now remember, the square root of 36, see 36 is a perfect square. So the square root of 36 will be 6. Now remember what that means. So the square root of 36 is 6 because, because 6 times 6 is 36, and that's the radical can you get. So what number times itself will give you 36? All right, so the answer is 6. In B, let's see, in B you had the square root of 64. All right, so the square root of 64, same thing. 64 is a perfect square. So when, when you look at 64, you have 8 times 8 is 64. All right, so the square root of 64 is um, 8. All right, so the answer for letter B is, is 8. So we have 6 for this one. We have 8 for letter B. And then for letter C, you have 5 times the square root of 16. So let's look at that one. So you have 5 times the square root of 16. And so remember, 16 is a perfect square as well. And so the square root of 16 is 4. So you get 5 times 4. And so you get 20. And so the answer to letter C is 20. For letter D, you have negative square root of 81. So negative square root of 81. So 81 is a perfect square. And the square root of 81 is 9. Because 9 times 9 is 81. So this becomes a negative 9. So letter D is negative 9. In letter E, you have the square root of 9 divided by 25. And so in this case, we're going to use the quotient rule for radicals. So I can rewrite this as the square root of 9 divided by the square root of 25. And remember, the square root of 9 is, is 3, because 3 times 3 is 9. Square root of 25, 25 is a perfect square. So the square root of 25 is 5, because 5 times 5 is 25. And so that's what we get. And so if you multiply this out, I just want to remind you, if you say 3 fifths times 3 fifths, you get 3 times 3 is 9, and then 5 times 5 is 25. And so, and so the square root of 9 fifths, 9 20 fifths is 3 fifths, because 3 fifths times 3 fifths is 9 20 fifths. Okay? Okay, so that one, I didn't have a blank here, but that one's going to be 3 fifths. In letter F, you have the square root of a negative 25. So the square root of a negative 25. So remember, you're asking yourself this. You're asking yourself, what times itself is a negative 25? So what times itself is a negative 25? Well, remember, any number, any let's talk about a non-zero number. So we're not going to worry about zero here, because zero times zero is zero. But, but a negative number times a negative number is positive, right? And a positive number times a positive number is also positive. So no number times itself is ever going, no real number, and I say real number now, and no real number times itself will ever be negative. So you're going to say not a real number. Now it's very important, it's very important that you read the directions. The direction said this. The direction said, if it's not a real number, then I need for you to write not a real number. Don't do anything else. Just say not a real number. Make sure you read the directions. Okay, so I took care of that one. So you can say not a real number. All right, now number two, they want you to use your calculator in number two. So in number two, you have, um, and, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and actually put that on here, but let me get my calculator. So the calculator... And so make sure you know how to use your calculator. So in number two, you want to round to the nearest thousandth. And so you have the square root of 14. And notice this is a cube root right here. So make sure you know how to, how to deal with different roots. So this is the square root of 14. So there's a square root button here. And so you see it right here, the square root button. All right, so we'll press, you can press second square root to get to it. And so it looks like this. And then you're going to say 14. You don't have to close the parentheses since you're just putting one number right there. And just press equal. And then it said to the nearest, to the nearest thousand. All right, so let me remind you about this. All right, so notice 
notice on your calculator you have 3.741657 and so on. Okay? So remember, this is the tenths place, this is a hundredths place, this is a thousandths right here. That's the thousandths place. And so to round to the thousandths place, you have to look at this place value as well. So you, look, you have to look at this. So if this number is 5 or greater, then you got to add 1 to the place you want to round off to. So it is 5 or greater, so this becomes 2. So, so this is going to be approximately equal to 3.742. So that is, that is this one, so 3.742. All right, now let's look at the cube root. Now with cube root, you're going to have to use, see this function right here, right above this, this white arrow right here? It's right here, so it says uh, x, x root right here. Now for this calculator, to get cube root, you got to press the index first. So the index is 3, you got to do that. Then you're going to press second, and then you're going to press this function right here. And now see it looks like this. And then our radican is 10.21. So 10.21, put type in 10.21 here. Again, I don't need parentheses since it's just one little thing, one number I'm typing in, and then press equal, and we get this. All right, so we'll go ahead and write that out. So in in the B part, we have 2.1697, oops, sorry, 2.1694. So right here, 2.69141138 and so on. Okay, so again, the thousands place, this is the tenths, hundreds, thousands. So here's the thousands right here. And then you gotta look at this place value. Since this is uh, less than five, then the number in the thousands place stays as it is. So the answer is gonna be 2.169. 2.169. And so this becomes 2.169. All right. Okay. So now with the others, again, don't, don't use a calculator with the others. Um, try and do this without the calculator. So the question is uh, that you want to find the cube root of, of um, 343. So what number times itself, what number times itself is 343? All right. So in 3a, you have the cube root of 343 okay so so what number times itself is 343 that's the question so try to do this without the calculator so so let's say you think it's five all right so let's type in five I mean to write out five so so let's see remember question mark here so five times five is 25 and then 25 times five will give us that's 10 that's 12 so 125 so obviously it's greater than than, than five right so let's try seven. So let's try seven. Seven times seven times seven. And let's see what that equals. So seven times seven is 49. And then 49 times seven. Let's see, nine times seven is 63. Well, that looks promising, right? The last digit's three. So nine times seven is 63. Seven times four is 28. Plus six gives us 34. So the answer is seven. All right. So seven times seven times seven will give us. 343. And then, and then you can always check on your calculator. Uh, you could have even, and it's, and again, I said, I tried doing this without a calculator, but obviously you didn't have access to a calculator. So, uh, uh, so you're just going to say, like we did earlier, we're going to say five raised to the third power. We know that didn't work. Then we said, well, all right, let's try six, six raised to the third power. That's 216. That didn't work. So let's say seven raised to the third. That worked. You could also actually done the cube root of 343, but the whole point here, see, if you were doing this in class, if you're doing this in class and not virtual, in class, you would have done this without the calculator. You would have been told to put the calculator away. So, so just remember, you're, you're kind of at a, um, a, a dis, you're kind of advantage here because you're doing this virtually. Um, but uh, in class, you would be doing this without a calculator for this for this assignment, except for number two. But you could have also done the cube root. So remember how we did the cube root? So you'd say three, the index is three, and then cube root, 343, press equal, you get seven. Okay? So that's seven. So this one's seven. 
All right, and then the cube root of a negative 8, so again, what times itself three times is negative 8, right? So the cube root of negative 8, so what times itself three times is negative 8? Hopefully you can do this without a calculator. So negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is negative 8, so the answer is negative 2. All right, now in letter in number 4, you want to find the principal square root of 100. So you've got to know some terminology. So when you're asked to find the principal square root, you're asked to find the positive square root. So principal square root, you got to remember, is positive, positive square root, okay? And so the square root of 100 is 10. So the positive square root of 100 is 10. You want to find all square roots of 81. So that means, that means positive square root of 81, the principal square root, and also the negative square root. And so the the uh, square roots of 81 would be a positive 9 and a negative 9. All right, let's look at 6a. So in 6a, we have this for 6a. We have, um, let me put that here. We have the square root of 64 minus the square root of 9. All right, so the square root of 64 we know is 8 because 8 times 8 is 64. 64 is a perfect square. 9 is a perfect square as well, so that will be easy. The square root of 9 is 3, because 3 times 3 is 9. And so 8 minus 3 is now 5. So the answer for 6a is 5. For 6b, you have the cube root of 8 plus, I think it was the square root of 25. Square root of 25. So the cube root of 8, so what times itself 3 times is 8. 8 is a perfect cube, so that's 2. 5 is a perfect square. Uh, square, so the square root of 25 is 5, so 2 plus 5 is 7. So 6b is 7. And then in 7, you want to evaluate the fifth root of 32. So again, remember what that means. So what times itself? 5 times, right? 5 times, the index is 5, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is 32. And so uh, Obviously, it's going to have to be a small um, number, so let's let's try 2, and, and 2 is going to work, by the way. 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 2 is 16, 16 times 2 is 32. So the answer is 2. All right, that one may be a little bit more challenging for some of you, uh, so let's try 7b. So at 7b, you have the fourth root of 6, fourth root of 625, right? And so what times itself, 4 times, is 625? So without a calculator, you see that last digits, the last two digits 25, right? So, so you know that you're going to try 5 first, correct? You're going to try 5. And so let's try it. So 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. Uh, okay, so 5 times 5 is 25, right? 25 times 5 is 125, right? And so 125 times 5, well, 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times 2 is 10, plus 2 is 12. And then 5 times 1 is 5, plus 1 is 6. So there it is. So the answer is, is 5. All right, so that is 7B. And that is the key to, um, as a key to topic, uh, let me make this a little bit smaller. All right. So that's the key to topic 18, worksheet extra one. And that's the one dealing with, with uh, radicals. That's the one dealing with radicals.